From ancient Egypt to the Bantu tribes, the leopard has always been seen as a figure of power. Faster, smarter, crueler than the lion, he is independent and born to a single mother. Since the beginning of her times, men has needed some primal identification with animals. From Shaka Zulu, king of the Zulu nation from 1816 to 1828, to Kenny West, the leopard fur and print has transcended time and continents. In 2014, I received a grant from the National Council of the Art of Quebec. I was at that time supposed to work in uh, Ivory Coast, Liberia, and Guinea. I was exploring the idea of borders using a photomaton Polaroid cameras. Unfortunately, it was also the moment where West Africa was taken by an unprecedented Ebola epidemic. And first of all, I'm extremely hypochondriac, and it really didn't feel like the right moment to crisscross the borders of the region with the ongoing paranoia. So I decided instead to relocate to Chateau Rouge. Chateau Rouge, I'm making some weird sounds. Okay, uh, Chateau Rouge is the biggest African market outside of Africa and that is situated in the heart of the 18 arrondissement in Paris. In Chateau Rouge, I will spend my days by the subway station uh, amongst the various dealers, the hustlers, and the cops. It's a place where you can buy a fake Gucci purse, hair extension, sex, drugs, and illegally exported food from the continent. One day, I met with Wanda Lisette. She had a gorgeous red afro. When I asked her to photograph her, she was busy. She told me to come back the next day. And so did I. When she showed up for the photo shoot, she was wearing a leopard booboo, some sort of inside dress. I took a few polaroids of her, and we both went our separate ways. Right after that, I was walking with a friend on Rue de Rivoli. And almost every window of every shop were filled with leopard prints. It was leopard purse, leopard shoes, leopard coat, leopard pants. I started noticing an abundance of leopard in Paris during the fall of 2014. And a little while after my encounter with Wanda, I ended up in a select club in the left bank of Paris. This couldn't be more estranged than the Chateau Rouge crowd I usually spend my days with. At the club, I noticed two beautiful blonde girls wearing something that looks like designer leopard print dresses. At first I was amused about how leopard was the common denominator from the most African place of Paris to the most aristocratic and upper class one. And it got me wondering, growing up partially in Gabon and been working on the African continent for six years at the time, Leopard was for me evocative of Maréchal Mobutu Sese Seko Kukunwa Bandu Wazabanga the military dictator and former president of Democratic Republic of Congo, formerly known as Zaire. Mobutu, who was in power for more than 32 years, was known as the leopard of Kinshasa because of his leopard fur hat, a fashion hat that carries heavy significance. The talk was to Mobutu what the crown is to the royal family of England. A way to assert his power over his people. Zaire was his kingdom, and the talk was his crown. But that got me questioning. How such an important symbol of power went from Shaka Zulu, Mobutu, to the chic Parisian of the left bank? The answer is Mr. Dior. 
<laughs> Before him, the leopard print was seen as tacky, sexual, or vulgar. It was part of the colonial imagery and associated with the idea of primitivism and exoticism. Here, an ad of a human zoo in Paris in 1887. In 1947, Mr. Dior will create his first collection. Seen as the Jean-Paul Gaultier of his time, his work was transgressive and audacious. In the collection, a first leopard print address Title, The African. And just like that, in a house situated 30 rue de Montaigne, the leopard suddenly became noble. Mr. Dior heir was Yves Saint Laurent. And from Saint Laurent to Dolce Cabana, Cavalli, or H&M, the leopard has since infiltrated urban fashion around the world. It had been free of the cultural weight attributed to it in both Africa and earlier Western trends. The motive evolved with time, country, and culture, as illustrated by this series of portraits. My quest for leopard led me to travel the world, from Texas to Libreville, from Dakar to Clermont-Ferrand, and from Paris to KwaZulu-Natal. Here in Kinshasa, with the chef Matazi Kibala, Ariel Dombal, in the Museum of Hunting and Nature in Paris. Philo Dlala and Zanele Dlomo, in KwaZulu-Natal, two Zulu women. Aisha, a Muslim woman in Senegal. Dora Diamant, a French DJ. Nancy, a young woman in the Gabon. Jean-Pierre, a European diplomat. Samuel Wedi, a young impersonator of Mobutu in the street of Kinshasa. Samuel dressed like Mobutu, talked like him, and even called his wife by the name of the late dictator's wife, Bobila Dawa. <laughs> Marie Beltrami, a French stylist. Julie, a young woman in the street of Kinshasa. <coughs> Abby News, a graphic designer by day and pinup model during the weekend. Madame Fay, a Senegalese woman. Lola, a cabaret artiste. And finally, there was Larry. I found, I found Larry while Googling leopard man on Google image. <laughs> when uh, I asked him why he underwent such a metamorphose, Larry told me that in 1993, he dropped out of college. He lived in the street, 
worked every dead end job, seen his fair share of injustice and many inhumanities toward men, went had enough and wanted out of society. Knowing that was not entirely possible, he decided to become a leopard man. Larry died last year. The eccentricity inherent to this pattern make each one of them unique and atypical. They are different and assured in their desire to show the world their peculiarities and their personalities. Breaking all background, the leopard has become a unique globally bending statement about what can unite us as human beings despite our diverse ethnic, social, cultural, religious origins. And this photography has always been extremely personal to me. It allows me to explore the world, my understanding of the world, in a very tangible way. And this brings me to my most recent project, which is also a pattern. I explore the, the, human, the human art um, and misconception about race, gender, human sensibilities, and the vulnerabilities which we all experience while sharing feeling with each other. During my last residence in New York, I recorded the heartbeat of over 30 persons. I photographed every one of them and asked them intimate questions. I decided to cut off their face of my negative, and by preserving their anonymities, I'm also trying to allow the audience to get deeper into each person. I'm creating a sound that is colorblind and borderless. This project is ongoing and will be continued in South Africa this year, a place where mixing people's art 25 years after the end of the apartheid assume a much deeper politicized meaning. Ah, oh, please, yes, thank you.
No one has the same heartbeat as you do. Your heartbeat is an identity marker, such as your face, your handprints, or your DNA. Thank you very much.